As the Olympic Games continue in London, so have the protests and large-scale militarized policing. Demonstrators at the Games will have to contend with a 553 million pound security operation, the largest mounted in peacetime Britain, involving 12,000 police, 23,700 security personnel, 7,500 Ministry of Defense staff, and 13,500 military personnel in order to protect the 34 venues and more than 60 non-competition games venues from terrorist and civil threats. There are missiles on top of London apartments, spy drones, warships, LRAD sonic weaponry, and even the potential downing of airliners authorized by British officials, including Prime Minister David Cameron. The police have been granted additional powers to combat protesters during the Games, with clauses in the London Olympic Games and Games Act of 2006 seemingly giving officers the ability to seize placards and political posters and even enter private homes to seize protest materials. Before the Games even got started, mass arrests had been made. London police used pepper spray against a critical mass, cycle ride. There had been calls on the internet to stage the London ride on July 27th as an anti-Olympics protest. But why are there protests? Politics is involved in decisions about hosting the Games and about which countries can participate. It is precisely because sports seem to be neutral that it is so effective to use them for political purposes. Then there's the cost. The bill funded by the public is a staggering 9.3 billion pounds and this is in a time of economic hardship and austerity measures. In addition to the 80,000 seat stadium and other sporting venues, the projects include an athlete's village of elegant cream colored apartments with glass balconies and polished woodwork set in sculpted parkland, most of them in Newham, north of the River Thames. Newham is also ground zero of a British housing crisis that has grown acute since the 2008 financial crash. The credit crunch reduced UK home building last year to the lowest peacetime level in nine decades. The Department of Culture, Media and Sports says, quote, The benefits from hosting the Games are major in social, economic and sporting terms and will be a boost to the country, end quote. Some cities like Montreal might disagree. It took taxpayers there 30 years to help pay off the debt that amassed from hosting the 1976 Games. And there have been the theories that the Athens 2004 Olympics may have contributed to Greece's financial catastrophe. The Games, with their image as the ultimate sporting event, are a marketer's dream for reaching a global audience and is big business for television networks, advertisers, and Olympic sponsors. British author and filmmaker Ian Sinclair stated, The only water you are allowed to buy at the Games is sold by Coca-Cola. The only food you are allowed to buy is McDonald's. The access to the site is through the Westfield Shopping Mall. It is like an invasion. Critics, including boxer Amir Khan, find it galling that a nation fighting obesity will have a giant fast food outlet at the heart of its greatest sporting event. McDonald's restaurant on the Olympic Park is the biggest in the world and can seat 1,500 people but could easily accommodate 500 more if necessary. It will operate for six weeks, serving an estimated 50,000 Big Mac burgers and 180,000 portions of fries. Initially, 2012 was going to be the greenest games until organizers realized this promise could not be kept. For example, they said it would be an opportunity to clean up the contaminated area on the Eastway cycle track, which contains radioactive materials. But rather than clean up the site, works have spread the contamination far and wide and include the deliberate and illegal burial of radioactive contaminants in the Olympic Park, 250 meters away from the main stadium, according to GamesMonitor.org researcher Mike Wells. In a clip from Wells' short film, London Takes Gold, Peter Frankenthal, Economic Program Relations Director at Amnesty International, had this to say about some of the companies the International Olympic Committee decided to accept as sponsors. The London 2012 Organising Committee is a public body in receipt of public funds, and they're behaving in many ways like a commercial organisation entering into contracts 
without considering the ethical dimension of these contracts. Um, I think they should have a, uh, an ethical procurement policy. They have become tainted um, by the human rights abuses linked to um, some of their sponsors, and that's become a major problem for London 2012. Sponsors such as Dow Chemical, Rio Tinto, BP, companies that have been linked to environmental damage, to human rights abuses, and by entering into a relationship with these companies without properly considering their impacts on human rights and the environment, they become tainted by some of these impacts and associations. It's a branding issue.